the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're one match in to the day and about to hop into the match between Lemmy Jux and Two Wet. I'm TJ and I'm joined with Dan. Yo. TJ and Dan. Yep, that's us. How you doing? Uh, well, you know, the first match was really fast. It, it was. didn't really get to get comfortable just yet. I'm still kind of warming up, waking up throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And we're already done. I mean, it's like, that was like, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah. So hopefully this series is a little bit more intense and action packed. We've got Two Wet versus Limmy Jux. Uh, and then that winner ends up going to play Oskaka for the top four and ultimately a spot in the finals. Uh, I feel like I've seen Two Wet a lot. We've seen Two Wet a whole heck of a lot. Seen week three and week four? Week three, week four. And also, we saw him in round one of, or yeah, the Redemption Tournament Group A, Redemption Tournament Round One. Gotcha. However you want to put it. Um, he's actually the player that we've seen the most across the Legendary Series. Lead Paint was the only other player to qualify twice, so the only other player that we were supposed to see twice in the Redemption Tournament. But he won. So now Tuwet is going to try and join him as one of the players who had two opportunities and actually made it. Let me jux. Haven't seen him in a while. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, but he didn't have the best performance in his Legendary Series regular week. He was the first player eliminated. Uh, he ended up losing to Life Coach and GCT Turth, 0-3 and 1-3 respectively. And uh, his matches were very quick, and he didn't get much air time. So I think he's going to want to change that today. Yeah, he's going to mix it up with Rogue and Hunter, the only player to bring Rogue. Oh, I apologize. Caldy also brought Rogue, but we didn't get to see it. Well, that's too bad. Well, he's the only last playing or last player to bring Rogue at the moment. Meanwhile, Tuet, the only player to bring Mage. The other classes, we'll see a couple of uh, other people playing it. Tuet with the Warlock and the Druid, and Limijux Lim with the Warlock and the Hunter. Mm -hmm. Mage is Tuet's favorite class by a wide margin, he's told me. Um, he was one of the very first players to experiment and make a successful deck with Flame Wakers. And we saw that during his first week. And the last time we saw him, he actually brought a interesting tempo mage that like topped out really heavily with uh, lots of big creatures. So it was like a mix between a tempo and a value mage. But we'll have to see. First matchup is going to be Druid versus Hunter. And it looks like it is going to be some variation of Bin Rage Hunter from Limmy Jux. Could be the hybrid. Uh, well, Houndmaster implies that it's not. It just... Usually, when the, the thing about the hybrid hunter is that you have such aggressive opportunities to take the board. Um, and so that's why you need to play cards like Pilot Shredder because you don't really have many synergies outside of Haunted Creeper and Animal Companion for Houndmaster. Uh, in the mid-range hunter, you have, you know, the... Uh, what's it called? The Web Spinner, um, the Animal Companion, the Haunted Creeper, and you know it does it does kind of continue to scale up over time. Versus things like the Abusive Sergeants and the Leopard Gnome, you're not going to hunt massive. Yeah. So generally speaking, the Pilot Shredders are more versatile. Although maybe he mixed it up. Maybe it's one Hound Master, one Pilot Shredder. People have been really toying around the idea of changing one or two cards in Hunter just to really confuse people. Especially with the four drop, I've seen Colt Master as well. Maybe not so much in competitive play, um, but I've seen a lot of players that have had success on ladder, success on the top end of Legend, with using Colt Master, because you have a lot of tokens that you can trade in, especially on turn four, to give you longevity with your hand. Yeah, get a little bit deeper in your deck. Yeah, and that web spinner does heavily imply it is more than mid range hunter, which gives Limit Shucks quite the edge in this matchup, especially considering how slow the druid started. Yeah, when he has to hero power on turn one, and then likely just hero power. Uh, he can play around Houndmaster. I'm not sure how much merit that has if he can put him on even playing Houndmaster, let alone having it in his hand. Hmm. Um, you can, it's definitely higher than zero, for sure, because he skipped his turn one and he's on coin, and now his turn two didn't involve a coin three play, which yeah. means it's probably not face hunter. So, two it made the conclusion, playing around Hound Master, take a little bit of damage, and it ends up being the right call. But, uh, if I'm Limit Jux, I don't, I don't think I'll be dismayed, I'll just play Animal Companion here, or I can coin out the Pilot Shredder, since, uh, generally speaking, the Animal Companion can just get swiped. Yeah. I wonder. 
Next turn, he also has flexibility with being able to use Animal Companion in tandem with Web Spinner to put two beasts on the board, so that way he's almost guaranteed value out of Hound Master. Also, like you said, if you're wrathing into a Haunted Creeper, it also could imply that you have swipe available to make the board a little bit easier to swipe. So that way your turns later on aren't awkward where you have to attack into the Haunted Creeper first in order to set up a better swipe. Well, he uses the swipe now, and out comes oh. the Succubus. That is tough. That is really good for Living Jokes. Place That's a 4 3 with the 4 3. The only thing that probably could be better is if it was a strong beast. Like the Scavenging Hyena or the River Crocolisk. Or the Dire Wolf Alpha. The strongest of beasts. Yeah. By far. Because he's no beta. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what do you do here? I guess you can charge down the the Leoc, try and fight for the board really aggressively. You don't want Leoc to be buffing those other minions because Sludge Belcher and the Druid of the Claw become a lot weaker due to these buffed minions. This is really difficult. But at the same time, he does have some tools to help stabilize over time. He's got two Keepers of the Grove, which are very useful. And he still has the uh, initiative to go first before his opponent. It's two turns before his opponent plays high main. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there another play? I guess you could yeah. use Keeper of the Grove, but I think you want to use all five mana here outside of uh, turn five. Drew the Claw charging into the Leoc seems to be the best, though. Yeah. Either way, it's going to be like a two-for-one trade right. in the end. But... Leaving Leoc up opens him up mm -hmm. for more possibilities. If it makes you feel any better too wet, you could assume that Succubus was a 2-3 instead of a 4-3, because I think the outcome might be the same if his opponent plays a Houndmaster. Yeah. So, there, it's like, yeah, even though it's a Succubus, okay, mm -hmm. it ended up not really doing too much anyways. Make his day a bit brighter. can actually trade in the Web Spinner as well. With the okay. Houndmaster. Oh. Slightly better stats, but you lose the Beast Synergy if you need it to kill Command. Dire Wolf Alpha. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it. In Raider and Turner, some players choose to opt to put it in. I know uh, Death Star V3 really likes to put Dire Wolf Alpha in his deck. The third Death Star. Yep. Not or to be Death confused. Star. Not to be confused with Death Star V2.8. I, I called him Death Starve at first because I thought the V3 was like a VE. Oh, really? Yeah. Did he correct you? or? Because I've no. actually never clarified. No one corrected me, and I looked like an idiot, mm -hmm. like usual, TJ. Are you happy? Is that what you wanted to hear? Well, maybe one day Death Starve V3 will come out and say, You know, my name's supposed to be Death Starve, right? <laughs> and then everybody I've will be met like, Dan knew all along. I actually met Death Star. Though. He's a really fun guy. Yeah. Very passionate about card games. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, he has ops to go, forego the high main and to go for maximum damage possible. And I can't tell if this is the right play or not, TJ. Can you help me break it down? Do you think that was the, the good thing here to push for damage? If you have two kill commands, I guess so. Yeah. I suppose because if you don't play Direwolf Alpha... It's too easy for you, your opponent to play high main, or you play high main, and your opponent eats up one of the four threes, uh, and then you can't get through efficiently on the next couple of turns, right? This spreads out your damage, but it also makes it really hard for you to play your high mains. Well, it's just, you know, a little more awkward. High main next turn is... You're floating in mana, yeah. and then you still have a second high main in your hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's really any opportunities where I have an advantage on board and in the game and not play high main on turn six. But I'm not a golden hunter. <laughs> and let's pray you never win. <laughs> so why don't you Savage Order clean up here? He's still taking a lot of damage either way. Almost too much. So your hero powers gains one health. Wow. Oh, Whoa. that hurts. I think that's game. <laughs> Let me Jux looks thoroughly well, confused. Well, he just kill commands. That's yeah. game number one. 
Well, it's a rough matchup from the start. Yeah, it's uh, not going to be it. one that Tuet was optimistic in the first place. This is a really difficult one to overcome because of all of the uh, pressure that's dealt with the mid-range hunter and the tempo that's gained back. Let me just is still confused. Look at him. He's yeah. furling his brow. Mm -hmm. Just straight up, like, can't even begin to comprehend what his opponent just did. But I guess that could be equivalent to your opponent conceding. Yeah. Like, attacking... Which is like, okay, if you have any kind of damage, like an eagle horn bow, I die, but whatever. This game's you know, over anyways. Yeah, there's not many ways for him to be able to come back mm -hmm. in the game, even if Limby Jux didn't really have lethal damage. There's two high mains sitting in the hand. But Limby Jux still has Warlock and Rogue still left remaining. Uh, Tuet, Mage Warlock Druid, and Tuet actually got eliminated in the first round of the, his, the first redemption tournament that he competed in as well. Yeah, that's true. So he really wants to make it further. In general, he hasn't really gone far whenever he's gone to broadcast. Mm -hmm. How did he do in the other Legendary Series weeks? In week three, he tied for fifth. And in week number four, he tied for third. So he got so strong he, as it went along. Yeah, so he lost in the first round. No, he then, lost in the second round. and oh, then the second round. And then lost in the semifinals. So he had okay. mediocre performances. His overall game score was 14 wins, 17 losses. And if you count in his performance in the Redemption Series Week 1, it was 15 wins and 20 losses. That's a lot of games. Yeah. yeah. 35 games of two what? And that doesn't even include... He's competed in almost every single Challenger Club, uh, Cup, and he w uh, won two of them. So the amount of best of fives that this guy has played in order to get to where he is right now... So yeah, it's quite numerous. Yeah, it's probably around 75. So now he's going to re queue up the Druid versus the Rogue. And this is another difficult matchup. I, I really am starting to wonder so many Druids. And yet, it seems like they have a hill to climb up over every single time. The exact, the, you know, the exaggeration of Drew is that it says it's 45% against against everything. But now I feel like it's leaning farther away from that. Maybe like 40% against everything. Yeah. And if Tuet can't get a win against Rogue, which could be one of its worst matchups, and then Handlock just gets pumped out and you can't defeat Handlock, or, you know, maybe you can, but say your opponent just decides to play Zoo. Well, what then, TJ? I don't know. Who do we become? Yeah, it seems like the faster decks are faster nowadays, and the um, slower decks hit harder. So Druid, uh, they get punished more for not having a good start against aggro, and then they get punished by control for not being able to curb out well. So they don't have enough time to like buy into or draw into combo as they used to, and they don't have enough time to draw into removal spells against aggro. So their matchups are not really improving at all. This what? one though, mm. pretty good. I'm actually kind of surprised why no one's really gone for some type of ramp druid again. After Kabi was successful in week two, maybe it was just because of a stylistic thing. Like Kabi just happened to be really good at ramp druid, and it seems to be his play style. But everyone seems to be leaning toward this fast type of druid. And I guess maybe not to say even ramp per se, but even just having like you know the taunts. Mm -hmm. The taunts available are so key. Everyone seems to be gravitating farther away from that. Ancient of War type, and just going back to traditional mid-range fast druid, mm -hmm. which has a lot of holes. Yeah, I mean it's still decent when it curves out well, but, but gosh, if you get pieces of the combo in your hand early on, it can sometimes just spell the end of the game very, very quickly. I mean Tom did manage to fortunately turn it around in his match against Caldi, but even then that was like. Looking really good for Caldi, and all of a sudden he just like ran out of gas and Druid happened to have the right answer. He lost the board to six grand patients at one point. It doesn't usually happen, especially right. against Druid. Against Warlock? Yeah. Control Warrior? Sure. Druid? Not so much. Alright, well... Oh, so can you wild growth, coin wild growth, and your opponent Weapons up and then you innervate Harrison Jones. Mm hmm. Gain like all your card draws. Basically, grabbing Ancient of Lore out early. Yeah, Ancient of Lore with one less health for two less mana. He thought about it. But I mean, he'll effectively be able to do the same thing. That's true. Just so a that turn you don't later. Get to play Wild Growth. Now you just have to play it this turn. 
Yeah, the next turn he can coin it out and still keep Minervade for a rainy day. Or a sunny day. He doesn't want to play the key of the grove just on turn four, or turn three rather, because he ramped, so... This way he gets to keep the, or he gets to hold off to the keeper. But this other way, Harrison becomes contested onto the board. It's a lot of five drops. One of each kind. We call this the five drop sampler. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that's what we called it. Mm hmm. Thanks for clarifying. He also might want to save Harrison Jones for not just. It could be, yeah, a when vanilla you save one it for. Two. It could be just saving it for, um, you know, the weapon charge that yeah. has some kind of buff on it. Mm hmm. It's too vulnerable now, anyways. Whoa. Mm. You can deal with it with a prep fan or prep oil. Yeah. Prep oil is not too awful, I think. If you prep oil, you can actually use the SI7 agent. So many if you prep fan, you can do, do that as well. But it doesn't fit the curve as well. So the SI7 agent allows you to push through with damage. Everything is just slightly overkill, though. This guy's and then Keeper of the Grove should be able to allow it to stabilize. Yeah. Of course, the opposite of it is, well, this is probably the time to use Harrison Jones, because if you play Keeper of the Grove, you're just going to trade into it. Mm -hmm. So, does that weapon belong in a museum? Or will this uh, the wild be safeguarded? That is the question. He also has a chance, if he plays Harrison, to draw into Wrath. Ooh, I like that possibility. So he can integrate out of Wrath. Or his Keeper is floating in mana. And like you said, it just gets eaten. Traded into. Devoured. Belir is a cannibal. It is. It's rough. It's rough being a card in Hearthstone. You just keep dying and getting revived all the time. Yeah. What to do? It's okay. Cards don't have feelings. Except in Yu-Gi-Oh! Then all of a sudden they become like these really crazy characters with emotions and stuff. I like Harrison Jones. I think Harrison's pretty good, but Keeper of the Grove. <laughs> Keeper of the Grove does two things. It kind of gets rid of the weapon charge at the same time. Yeah. Doesn't it? I suppose. The thing is, now what are you saving this this Harrison Jones for? The thing about Harrison is that it increasingly gets a little bit more awkward as time goes on. Because Rogue can answer it easier since they have more mana. The thing about it early on was that Harrison was a 5-4 body hitting Rogue every single turn. Yeah. Keep it the Grove. Uh, the one thing about that play is that Keep it the Grove doesn't have many great uses against Oil Rogue. Usually the only times you get use out of it is when you're silencing an Edwin Van Cleef mm -hmm. or silencing an oiled target. But a lot of times when you go for an oiled target, it's either small enough for you to be able to remove in other ways or they're killing you on the same turn that they're doing it. Eight mana available. Uh, everything is a little off just because of the odd numbers. So, two wet has held on to Harrison this long. Caesar's opponent hasn't used it yet. Force of Nature would allow him to clear. Um, and Force of Nature innervate is a full clear, and usually Grove ends up surviving. I don't even know if he wants to use. There's a four damage weapon. Yeah, it's true. The damage onto the keeper of the Grove might Over be kills. wasted. Yeah. And, but he does have Fan and Ives, so. What is he saving it for, though? Because if, if he plays Ancient of War next turn, then he can just attack and then Fan and Ives and clear the board. Unless he's going to use Harrison now. But Harrison is just. Harrison's actually okay, because you remove the weapon and you challenge the 5 5. You're not going to be able to do anything with the card that you draw. Yeah. But then the Ancient of Lore, hmm. Like, the Ancient Lore wants to come down now, because it's the, like, really expensive, and you get two cards as opposed to one, and it's a slightly better body. But you do take out that weapon. Who are you, you to don't tell the Ancient weapon. of Lore what he wants? Well, 
Two it is. I wonder. I guess so. Right. He's just a puppet. Two what's plan. <laughs> See, words like that just shows that you don't believe in the heart of the cards and you don't believe in your deck. <laughs> You're right. I was watching the reboot of the of the series. They actually have something called Five DS now, where they duel on motorcycles. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, dude. That's literally how every duel happens. They, they go on motorcycles, and the faster they drive, the more powerful their cars get. <laughs> like, it sounds like I'm making it up, right? Yeah. But the, here's the, even the worst part. It's actually really fun to watch. I, I enjoy it a lot. It's a great show. Well, we know that's... <laughs> We know that's not a next step for Hearthstone. No, it definitely is. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> no, damn. A Maz versus Raynad in the Legendary Series Finals on motorcycles in a Ducati, <laughs> and the loser just explodes like they do in the show. <laughs> now that's a Hearthstone tournament. Here at ESL, we do not condone <laughs> playing Hearthstone while you're driving your motorcycle. Are you kidding me? It's perfect, too. It's on the phone. It's, it's on mobile. All we need is a hologram device to come out of the iPad. You're telling me Hearthstone is in high keep. That's real esports right there. <laughs> Combine NASCAR with Hearthstone, get the ultimate spectator sport. <laughs> Americans will never stop tuning away. <laughs> Need to pitch those ideas <laughs> to more than just me and the audience. Yeah. I don't know why I just threw it all out there. Now it's going to be stolen. People won't give me credit. Yeah. He's got uh, Innervate for a double five drop, or he can just drop the Shade of Next Ramus. Shade of Next Ramus does get kind of vulnerable to another Blade Flurry or some kind of way. Especially if uh, after Jake Fan and Nuts. Dr. Boom. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, I'm telling you, TJ, go watch Yu Gi Oh! 5DS. It's and the characters are actually much better this time around. Before it kind of doesn't make sense that they're all just like school children. Yeah. But uh, and this time, like the characters, kind of dark and interesting because he comes from a poor family and stuff. I used to watch it all the time. I used to wake up yeah. three hours before school in middle school to watch if to uh, watch Yu-Gi-Oh, Beyblades, Pokemon, and Digimon. They all played in a row oh, in yeah? the morning. Yeah. Hmm. That was a really cool channel. Beyblades was my favorite. We've talked about Beyblades a lot, actually. That's like the one show I didn't watch a lot of. And it's the one show that you that, should have watched the like most. involves some kind of like user-trainer <laughs> relationship. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that. They couldn't really even control their, their Bay Monsters. Weren't Beyblades just tops? Yeah. On the tops that monsters came out of. It's it's sort of similar <laughs> it's sort of similar to Yu-Gi-Oh. The faster you drive your car or your yeah, or motorcycle, you the, the stronger the, your cards the, are. The, the faster you spin your blades, you spin, the stronger and faster your monster comes out of it. That's just dumb. Yeah. Card games are where it's at. Dude. Yeah. Oh, Innervate. So now you can drop Ragnaros. But Ragnaros has a lot of potentially bad targets here. I don't mind if he wants to try to go for maximum damage. Oh! And he hits Dr. Boom. He needed that. He got him. Really clutch moment there. Uh, I guess it's time to just uh, drake it up then. Yeah, it's going to be kind of weird if he doesn't draw into anything, any type of damage. Yes. Just because he doesn't have enough mana to like dagger up, re-deadly. And Blade Flurry after Drake. Yeah. And how's he going to deal with that rag without, like, a sap? Potmature is pretty good. Mm. Puts more targets on the board for it. It's decent, but I think SI is a little bit cleaner yeah, play. Because you can kill off the Drake. Yep. There's always a chance that this rag ends up hitting the Boombot or ends up hitting the SI. Mm. Well, it looks like your opponent can't deal with this very well, so I say you ride this wave as much as you can. Slam down Lotheb, play the... Or you hero power down the 1-1, one -one, slam Lotheb, and play the Shade of Shade Next Ramus. Ramus. I like that a lot. What to do? The thing about Lotheb Shade is that, one, you can't remove the Shade easily. And then, two, uh, you have a, a stealth minion, so that Savage Roar becomes a viable way to end the game. 
Especially if you pick up Keeper of the Grove. Two damage on Ragnaros is not enough to... It's going to force everything to trade in. He needed it to hit for f uh, for four. And that's if he doesn't hit a creature. Whoa, face! Yeah, that's almost guaranteed game. Yeah. Sprint for 12! <laughs> 12 mana, draw four cards. That is unplayable. That daily insight brought to you by Frodan. These, he actually can't do anything here. Oh, wait, wait, wait he can. <laughs> he can hypothetically mm. take care of Lotheb and the... Ragnaros hits uh, <laughs> the pilot shredder and then Doomsayer comes out. You know what would make Sprint even worse in that situation? 12 mana, draw four cards if mm -hmm. you have a dragon in your hand. Yeah, I guess so. Dragon Sprint. But uh, there's the force of nature, so the game ends anyways. That was actually a pretty nice clear from Limit Jux, but just not enough. And that's going to mean game number two goes over to two wets and that's a tied series yeah and that's a pretty good victory for him to take a win over rogue because that was one of the matchups that'd be tougher for his druid to find so he's got um i'm curious to see what kind of mages is is the big yeah. thing because every time we've seen two wet he's brought a different type of well he's brought the same type of mage but a really different flavor of that same type he's brought temple mage every time yep. but every time he brings it it gets like a little bit slower mm-hmm the first time it was like the super all-in, Flame Waker, Arcane Missile, Knife Juggler, Mirror Image type. Then the second time right. he had um, like Rag and Sludge Belchers. Well, I still think it's not really that smart to play Flame Waker. I still think that it's lacking a little bit of something. Uh, maybe Refinement. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is there are, is card draw in Mage. You have Echo of Medivh. You have Arcane Intellect. You have Duplicate as a secret, which could be pulled from that side. So hypothetically speaking, there is card draw. The problem is, Flame Waker is only spell dependent, so you can't rely necessarily like on duplicate, even though that's the best and most consistent way, because uh, you can predict what you're going to be able to get. And then Echo of Mediv only creates more minions usually, it doesn't create more spells, and then Arcane Intellect is not as reliable as you'd like. So the, the problem with Flame Waker is just, uh, it just gasses out way too easily. Yeah, he didn't even include it in his, his last variation. Yeah, I would say that Tempo Mage is just overall better because you get to do similar type things where you can flame cannon for really cheap, which is kind of like doing a spell damage with uh, the Flame Waker. Mm -hmm. And then go for ridiculous uh, no, snowball. Yep. Well, we are going to see what it is because Tuwet is queuing up the Mage. Let me just switches it up. He's going to throw out his Warlock here. We've yet to see this deck. But most players have been leaning towards Handlock lately. And I agree with them. I think Handlock has the stronger matchups across the board. You asked for it. All right, well, looks like it's going to be the hybrid tempo. He did, uh, it's just tempo mage, but he puts temp snow chuggers oh, okay, and water okay, elementals. Okay, okay. I was like, mech mage? But I know. cannon really is a little bit weird to include in mech mage. Yeah, this is... It seems like the list that he ran last week or in his week number four of the Legendary Series, it's basically just Tempo Mage, but he puts Water Elemental and Snow Chuggers in to increase the effectiveness of the matchup against Warriors and Rogues. Mm -hmm. Which is a smart choice. It worked out pretty well for him. It was like his highest win rate deck in the week that he played it. All right, well, if I'm Limit Jux, I... Just keep the Twilight Drake. Maybe even the Mortal Coil if you're suspecting it to be Mech Mage and then toss back the rest. Get the early game card that you can be playing instead of holding as the hand lock. Throws away as the Mortal Coil because he wants to have the, the Giants instead. One thing that I would be scared of against this any kind of deck would be about Mirror Entity. Mirror Entity is a really scary type of deck, so if you have anything like Ancient Watcher. Sometimes I contemplate keeping that as well. <laughs> Only sometimes, though. One thing that Tuwet does really well that I've talked about in the past couple weeks that we've watched him is mind games. He really loves mind games. He talked in his interview that he doesn't get tilted. He's got a really level head. But he really tries to take advantage of his, his opponents having the opposite. That's right. You call him the master of deception. I did. And that's true. 
The reason being is because he likes to uh, make it seem like he has more than one play, even when he only has one play. Or he makes it seem like he has multiple options when he has no play. Uh, he also does some pretty fancy things with secrets. Like there was one instance where he played his whole hand in all of his turns, like uh, he was playing um, Freezing Trap. And then it ended up being Explosive Trap. And he ended up taking a couple or a game off of Reyna with that. There was another game where he was playing Mage what in week number four, week number three, where he played like his secret was duplicate because he protected like his Sludge Belcher. He made sure that he focused like everything on making sure that his Sludge Belcher was duplicated. In the end, it ended up being Counterspell. Hmm, I see. That's pretty cool. So he likes to do things like that. Since he hasn't won, it hasn't been that effective. But he lost anyways. <laughs> yeah. But maybe this is his, but his trust me, guys, it was really awesome. <laughs> yeah. This is 6 plus uh, 6. That's 12. That's half his life. The thing about Tempo Mage is you really want to be able to start uh, making sure that the board is secure. There's, I guess you could use Fireball here to train the Mad Scientist and then make Mirror Entity really good, uh, considering that you expect maybe a second Twilight Drake. Or the worst spell. case scenario, Agent Watch. Base case scenario, Mirror Entity. Twilight Drake. Yeah? Void Caller? <laughs> Sorry, that's my, that's my thinking noise. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it, it also sounds awfully close to my mating call. So don't get confused, TJ. I know you looked at me like, wait, is is it time? Oh, no, okay. It's not. <laughs> I was very confused. For a yeah. Do you let this void caller go and or do you do you just ignore it? Play such Belger. Hmm. Well, we've talked about this quite extensively over this week and the past couple weeks that we've casted. It seems like it's always better to break it out on your terms. Unless right. you have absolutely no way that you could possibly deal with it for your next million turns. Mm. That's an exaggeration. For your well, next two or three turns. Well, a million turns is a long time, TJ. Hypothetically, I could use my hero power a million times and kill my opponent. Unless they have a million anti-kill bots. Or just the Mount Because they can't ping them. You can ping the Mount Ganus. Yeah, but they couldn't ping the face. I like just going face, going ham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm not when I'm not uh, going ham on the core, I like going ham on the face. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people would get that reference. No, but the people who do will think it's really funny. Everyone else would be like, "No, nah, that's not funny." Cringe cast or sad, please. <laughs> Like they always do. There's no demon in the hand, is there? I don't see it. Void caller. We haven't seen a demon at all. It's effect oh, we saw Malgas in the opening hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that was the only one. Yeah. Unfortunately, Majux is in a little bit of an awkward spot. He's going to fish. Maybe this can pick up a demon? No. And he ends up trading so that he doesn't lose it just to the hero power. <laughs> Two wet eyebrows did it. Interesting. This just got juicier. He's got Dr. Boom into Kale Thazad, into Boombot, into Boombot, into Boombot, into Boombot. It's pretty powerful. You know what comes after that, TJ? Another Boombot. What comes after that? Uh, a bunch of emotes saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well played. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have the perfect Hello. impression, but you also mix in Hello. the perfect amount of I'm sorry. Salt and angst. Thank you. I mean, uh this uh, molten giant is not gonna be that intimidating if you just make sure that it can't, has to go through the one two slime. Shadow flame would be intimidating though. Sure, but then you you can Play Kale the Zaw. Uh, I guess he gets Siphon Soul. Then you're not that happy about it. Yeah. To be honest, it feels like he's got two of them. Shadow Flame might be good. 
He's not worried about taking too much damage. It's true. Interesting. So he's playing like a classic demon lock. Yeah. With Dread Infernals over Doom Guards. Hoi! Wow, that's nerve wracking. Your Frostbolt ends the game. Oh, okay. Well. I think you're okay with playing Kale with the Zog because it could challenge hypothetically to just win the game. But you can do the same. Actually, the same exact power comes on what the board if you play Mad Scientist and the Kieran Tor. Kieran Tor, and if he hell fires, he actually does enough damage to himself where you kill him anyway. Yeah. So I I think this is a really good combination play. And having Keldazad just be siphon sold is pretty Stinks. brutal. I mean, even if he just plays a giant, Keldazad doesn't ch even challenge a giant. Right. So it's just feels like the weaker play in that that scenario mm -hmm. for too wet. Agreed. Too weak. Oh. <laughs> That rhyme was sick. You know, in basketball, they describe uh, a shot, like if someone's hitting a lot of basketball shots, yeah, uh, and they're like really hot streak or something, they call it wet. He's really wet? The, the shot was wet. Because it's like super smooth and like, because, you know, if it like swishes through the net really easily, then it's like a very clean shot. Looks like a water, something going into yeah, the water. Yeah, like a water drop. Yeah. So they call the shot was wet. What to do? It's pretty cool. I don't know why. To I'm telling you that. I just felt like a sharing. Thank you. It made me feel a lot better. I love when you share things from your mind. <laughs> it's an interesting. <laughs> Where place. else would I share it from? My your heart. Your hand. My hand. Like you could hand me a piece of paper or a candy. Is it time? To, is it just time to play Kale Zod here, to TJ? To just to get the revival on the Mad Scientist and the Kieran Tor. You get some pretty decent value. Yeah, Kirator is colliding into this thing, anyways. I think. Yeah, no, because your mad scientist is silent, so you can get the secret value out of it. The thing is, if you play Fireball and then Mad Scientist ping, and you play Snow Chugger, the Hellfires, then you have nothing to synergize with Kaldazad. There's actually no redemption in it whatsoever. Yeah. Kael'thuzad is actually exactly what this Redemption Tournament symbolizes. A second chance, a second life, or in Two Wet's case, a third life. Actually, if you count fourth his second life. qualification <laughs> process, his fourth life. <laughs> and if you count the double elimination in the Legendary Series, his sixth life. Well, one week he didn't even make it. No, no, no. He, Yeah, just kidding. I was going to say, he didn't even make it to the playoff round, but... But in group stages yeah, with double as Eminem said, you only have six shots and six opportunities. <laughs> Mom spaghetti, <laughs> <laughs> which is too wet to eat anyways. <laughs> wet spaghetti, wet, wet, <laughs> wet spaghetti. <laughs> uh. It's too bad that he can't fit Dread Infernal with uh, removal this turn because it would have been perfect. So to just like have the things line up. Yeah, I think he's just got a siphon soul here. Siphon soul. Kill off the Kieran Tor. Cross his fingers for no Frostbolt. Ooh. He's one damage off lethal. And this is like his opportunity because now he's just going to start chaining life gain. Heal bot, Draxus. He's going to be able to stay true, out. But the thing about Draxus is that it takes what his entire turn, so it's what like he's not do? gaining. He's only gaining as much life as on the board, minus 15. Or 15 minus whatever's on the board, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been negative health. <laughs> um, yeah, because... Wait, 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 wait. If you have Mirror Entity and they play Draxus, you copy the minion too, right? The 315. 315. Yeah. So you have to be careful about that as well. Well, Water Elemental is actually yeah, pretty possible. tough to deal with. Yeah. It's very annoying. Might be... Oh, uh, well. If he doesn't heal, he dies. But if he plays Dread Infernal Shadow Flame, he also dies. Uh, oh, sorry, if he doesn't clear the board, there's no point, really, in just healing. 
because he has no taunt givers. If he plays Antique Healbot, there's seven on the board. You play Antique Healbot in Shadow Flame. Yeah. Take four power off. He'd be a he'd be a 15 health with three power on the board. I don't know. I think I'd rather just Antique Healbot and Void Caller. Because a Void Caller lets you pull out the Dread Infernal. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you can I was Shadow thinking, Flame it next turn. You can attack into the Water Elemental and Shadow Flame it. I was thinking he would have Lethal with just Fireball, but it's not the case. Ooh, this, the counter spell is pretty nasty because it means Shadow Flame won't be alive anymore. You can also guarantee Mirror Entity. Granted, he has what's pretty standard for Temple Mages is two Mirror Entities and one counter spell. Right. Oh, that's a really good observation. What to do? He still also what wants to, to attack do? to the point where, like, say for example, he charged all face and pinged. I think he's still set up for lethal next turn, right? Because it'd be eight damage. Mm -hmm. So that's also something in his mind. But he does guarantee the the, the mirror entity here. Yeah. Oh well, he chooses to go it before playing counter spell. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter since that's it's the only counter spell. Usually oh, just okay, one. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, according to what you normally is, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, now because you played both, it's almost like, a, well, he knows one of them's probably counter spell. <laughs> yeah. So if he, he probably will try to avoid playing that Shadow Flame. He, like, might want to tap into the Mortal Coil or something first and then try to Mortal Coil to get that absorbed. But he's also to the point where he's at low enough health where it's hard for him to play around things. And still survive. Like, he has to spend two mana this mm -hmm. turn on Ancient Watcher, regardless. Right. Well, Ancient Watcher is good for Mirror Entity, and then you defend her. And that gives you room to tap. You, If he's holding one card, it could be Fireball, and then you can you can go into Draxus. Yeah. So I think you're okay, actually, tapping here. You die either if he draws to any kind of direct removal. Yeah. Oh, also something that you're no, you're scared about uh, the possibility of Drex being pulled out from the Void Caller. Yeah, that's actually a really big deal. If Drex gets pulled out of the Void Caller, then uh, Mage can just continue to push for damage, and you you can't ever really play this Dread Infernal because it gets you closer to, to death. I wonder. So he doesn't tap because if his opponent pulled out Draxus. He would just die to a fireball. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, uh, to it, evaluating what could go wrong if he play if he pulls out Doom Guard, will he have to fireball it, uh, or could he just leave the Void Caller, ping the face, flame strike or something? I don't know. It's, it's very complicated. The, yeah. the Defender at Argus really complicated things with the Taunted Ancient Watcher. I wonder. He's thinking, what demons could there possibly be? Doomguard, Draxus, Malganus. He can't really deal with any of those. Well, he, it's for well, sure that he can't deal with any of those. Here we go. Who's he getting a call? Look at it. <laughs> he winces. He's like, hey. Hey. Oh, that's not good for Limit Jokes. That's pretty bad. Eridar, Lord of the Burned, Burning Legion. Burned Legion. He pings the face. So he's, oh my god. Wait a second. Oh, it's just too bad that he didn't get the this right before the Void Caller could have potentially pulled it out. It's still a really good play because it protects him from spells. He's going to be... Oh, yeah. Why not? A 5-17. And now uh, Tuet's going to have to play Fireball on that thing. And uh, might as well just go all out here. This is a little bit of why I was curious. Uh, he didn't end up pinging the Ancient Watcher because the next turn he could also get through it. But now it looks like he has to get through the hard way. He's still like a rag 50-50 away from winning. That is true. For now, until he picks up more heal. Yeah. 
Draxus has a lot to do. He's got to clean up, uh, but for now, I mean, I think you just drop Dread Infernal. Yeah, it doesn't really get you in range. You know both fireballs have been used. You know that if Ragnaros so is a possibility, he could right. ping and set up the 50-50 anyway. You're getting, um, you're getting health, effectively, from Dread Infernal. You're netting two because you kill off the Water Elemental. You can't yeah. kill both, unless you want to Shadow Flame this turn, which... Oh, you can't because they have a counter, counter spell. spell. Yeah. Not many spells remaining. Maybe like mortar coils left for him to even proc, proc that counter spell. But it's likely that he might not even need that to win the game. Like to use any yeah. spells. Not that it mattered much, but I think he should have killed off that mana worm just to make sure to test for duplicate. But it, I don't think I think he may have already known already, so it might, doesn't matter. Just in case, in the future. One of those things where you might want to kill off the, the Mana Worm first. Yeah. Would you rather him have two Water Elementals? Probably not. Speaking of Water Elemental, comes down, but is it too little too late? I mean, Tuet also had to play it without pinging. That was the challenge. Molten Giant is a significantly huge draw. Allows him to race extremely effectively and quickly. Now puts him on a two-turn clock to win the game. And there's really not any way to push through for two wet. His only option here is rag, pyroblast. Six, not low with them. Uh, six, uh, eleven. He's got lethal on board. Well, he can freeze one of the minions. He can freeze the sludge belcher. Right. So you can free, he will have to freeze, uh, freeze the Sludge Belcher. You have to play Lotheb, freeze the Sludge Belcher, and then ping the face, cross your fingers for Fireball, and no heal from your opponent or no lethal. He's used both Fireballs. One on the Twilight Drake earlier. And one on the Malganus. He's got nothing left. It's rag or bust. Or he needs Major Domo. Is effectively major right. domo well Majux feels pretty strong about this just has to clean up the board a little bit just attack with the molten giant clean up the water elemental clean up the lotheb play the dr boom sit back and enjoy life because you're in a great spot my friend mm -hmm. And Dr. Boom basically makes Rag not even a reasonable win condition. Nope. Ouch. And that's going to do it. The Tempo Mage falls short to the Demon Lock. It's pretty cool. I heard Demon Lock was rotated out of the metagame completely because it just got out of control with how things have gone. So, uh, so far, though, it's been performing pretty decently. Yeah. Getting that win was very clutch. And now we go to game number four with a lead for two wet. Climbing back in the series. Lead for Lemmy Jux. Yeah. No, Lemmy Jux lost. No. Huh? Oh, no, he won. Yeah. Oh, oops. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, Lemmy Jux only needs to find a win now with Rogue. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's the only... And we, we've seen this Rogue mm -hmm. earlier. Um, how does Rogue fare off against, like, a Temple Mage like this? Uh, well, generally speaking, um, the rogue is really good at fighting back onto the board. Like, no matter how big you build it with stuff, it, it can always blade flurry. Yeah. So, in terms of tempo, rogue is one of the kings or queens. Um, we don't want to discriminate here. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, one of those things where, like, they want to be called qu kings, too. Yeah. Because they want to be respected, equality, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so rogue is still one of the kings. Yeah. If Of tempo. But then you run into the, the problem of gender equality where. If they were called kings in the first place because they were men, then maybe they'd just want to be called queens because they think queens have equal know. power to kings. I don't know. I also recently f uh, just finished watching Fate Zero where they put King Arthur as actually a female. And it was a very interesting take on stuff. Okay. I, don't, I, I know you don't like anime, but it was a really good show. Mm -hmm. You're just calling me out in front of everybody. Well, you told, just, you told me that you were, quote, the whitest guy you'll ever meet. The second whitest. Who's the first? 
I said I'm possibly the second widest person in the building. Oh, then who's the first? You, you Dan. Me? You. Whoa. Unstable portals. My favorite card in Hearthstone. Is it? It is. It's got some really cool art. Where does he even pull the card from? It pulls it from some mystical planet. Or you know where it pulls it from? Maybe an unstable portal. Well, I mean, the portal is from where, though? It, I don't know. It, it's it, too it, unstable. Don't know where it's from. Oh, come on. It's got a castle in the background. Especially in the R2. It literally rips a whole dimension. Mm -hmm. That's sick. Yeah. You said before that... Like, it's interstellar! You Literally! Said you said before that the epitome of esports is playing card games while you're driving really fast in motorcycles. But I think it's Unstable Portal. You, sir, are quite the meme. But Unstable Portal is about... Oh, hold on. I guess he has uh, a couple plays in the next turn. But Unstable Portal might rip him oh! a new one. And that is a 3-mana 6-6. Six, six. A three mana six nine worth of stats effectively though. That's if you true. can keep a, if you can have a creature on the board. I guess you play Kieran Tormir entity for the tempo and then you make it a four six. Whoa. Is there a vanilla four six? I don't think so. Spectral Knight. I mean it's not even really vanilla. Well, I asked if there was one. I know this one's not. There's a lot of four sixes in the game. Yeah. Uh, Spectral Knight, uh, Without any special effects. The, the thing that gives buff to the weapons, Smith, the weapon Spiteful Smith. Spiteful Smith. Uh, Drew the Claw. The Brotherhood shall Van Cleef is his answer, but he's about to get bad prepare. news. That is, again, the eviscerate on it, and that is why the rogue is the queen of tempo. Mm. King of tempo. Both. The leader of tempo. You can do it without gender. Does the Mirror Entity copy because it's Golden 2? Or does it give a Golden Van Cleef because the original Van Cleef is Golden? I think it's the Mirror Entity. Gotcha. Well, that plan was foiled. Now I guess you just set up Water Elemental. Just let your opponent trade into it. The thing about Limajux's play is that he used a lot of resources, even though it did gain tempo. Pilot Shredder gets... Demolished by the deadly poison, and then whatever comes out might not even challenge Van Cleef. Water Elemental does drop, but it doesn't even kill off Van Cleef. So you're kind of in a similar position, but imagine you get to freeze the rogue's face, and uh, what comes out of the Pyre Shredder is a 3 3 minion. That's kind of effectively what you can evaluate. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just follow this up with your own load them. You can even buff your load them next turn. Is there any merit to playing the Temple of Fortune now, though? Because you, now you can ping off the uh, Van Cleef. I guess you want to hit the face, though, with the Water Elemental. Yeah. Making a 3-9 is pretty wild. 3-9 that freezes. It's true. 3-9 that freezes. But you can do that next turn. You can coin out a Pyre Shredder and a Temple Enforcer, so load that might be the better play. Yeah. Or you can use Temple Enforcer... Coin fireball if need be. Ooh. Also appropriate. Freezes the Van Cleef. Doesn't want it to get an easy trade. And now this will prompt the Drake. Antique heal bot. So he had trade to this low fed. I feel like he doesn't need to, but at the same time. Or you're really scared of things like Coin Flame Strike or something like that. Or if he takes out your Azure Drake instead, mm -hmm. and then you're forced to take extra five damage to trying to clear the one health loath up off the board. Yeah, but then you get to pl you get to like attack again and then play Doctor Boom. I don't know. I guess I guess he just wants to pave the cleanest possible road for Doctor Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pink Pilot Shredder. The thing is, like, one thing that it's really difficult to recognize is the amount of tempo gained from Temple Enforcer, but in Arena, if you've played this card a lot, it is actually just insane. It's one of the best cards Priest has to offer, aside yeah. from, like, Shadow Madness, which also has ridiculous value. 
Especially since they can even extend that three health value with right with zero power. Yeah. And like Tempo Forcer is a really significant tempo gain for three mana six six that gains three man three health, and he's waited a really long time for it. So it hasn't even been that significant, and I feel like I feel like it's a little bit squandered to be honest, TJ. Lemmyjux is probably wet in his pants trying to think of what could possibly come out of an unstable portal that he well, hasn't even played yet. It's either a really bad card, like a Stone Tusk board, which he's never found relevance for, or it's an amazing card that's highly situational, like Deathwing. <laughs> Mocha the Ogre. Have you ever gotten Deathwing from an unstable portal? I have not. Mm. I have not. Or maybe it's like one of those things where it's like, He's got Hemet nesting where, and he's just finding the right time for me to play my beast. Yeah. Which sounds quite wild and unrealistic, but it's happened before. Yeah. It's definitely happened to me before. <laughs> okay, so Mana Worm being drawn here, not that, not that useful. You would like to use the Fireball, though, and that might prompt the Mana Worm to be dropped. Fireball with the Mana Worm, ping it down, kill off the Drake. Stabilize yeah. the board. I think he would have liked to play the coin rag here, but Dr. Boom foiled yep. that plan pretty quickly. So now I guess you really have to evaluate and see what comes out of the Shredder because you can't let that Drake live. Spell power is just so deadly on a road. These Boom Bops could do some work, though. Uh, yes, especially considering that um, you have a uh, Violet Teacher to back up with Phantom Knives. Like, that's a very high chance that it kills off both class. these minions. You know what the worst thing is? When this Phantom Knives draws a backstab. Because, <laughs> like, it's always one of those things where you're just like, God, if only you just were able to come to the opposite order. Ooh. That is some... Really weak boom bots, only doing one damage. Let me ask you, if Dr. Boom's boom bots only did one damage guaranteed. It'd still play it. But you could target it? Would that be Whoa. Would that be uh That'd be a weird mechanic, like death rattle targeted death rattle? I Yeah, it's like I don't know. All of a sudden. Well, I guess I don't know how the game would make it. Maybe it's like gives you a card that's zero mana, and then you no, it casts a spell. Then that's crazy. What if a Boombot's death rattle was put a Boombot in your hand? <laughs> so just spawn Boombots infinitely. Mm -hmm. Sounds balanced to me. Yeah, that's what I said. He's gonna answer with his own Doctor Boom here. Still holding on to that Temple Enforcer. Yeah, and you might not you might not need it for a while because he's got other big minions that can kind of get the job done. Rogue does have a blade flurry here though. Ooh. And he's got a farce here. I mean this is an opportunity to seize the board once again. As long as these boom bots don't do too much, ideally two to the face. For Limijux. Not on the violet teacher. Uh, okay. Yeah. Those, wow, that's Two times we've seen Dr. Boom and his Boom Bots be handled with minimal damage. Yep. I think. Okay. Well, if you just play Dr. Boom again, then could be kind of risky. You can ping off the 1 1, but there's 6 damage on the board. You only have 15 health. Right. He might actually go for a 50 50 here. With the Flame Cannon. Hero power down that 1 1 and Flame Cannon. And I got bad news. Bio teacher, if you can't handle the heat, Aye. turns out you could. Whenever I play Flame Cannon and I want it to go to like a creature on the left, that is leaning towards the left. I'm one of those guys that when you go to the arcade, I s and you're playing the games with the steering wheel, like the the driving the car games with mm -hmm. the steering wheel. I'm a full body animated driver. Yeah. So I think my car's gonna turn faster if I lean my whole body to the left. Oh, yeah. Kind of like every girl who's ever played Mario Kart. Well, you know, this is really difficult because... Because 2-Wet has actually played so much board-centric about stuff and Rogue's been able to gain so much tempo, he's so far behind. You know what the best card that could have helped him is? Is a card like Emperor Thorsan, so that way he could play things, but it's a little what bit complicated. Now he needs to get a little lucky. 
hit a one and three on the Violet Teacher or the Antique Heal Bot to stop the damage. But if he hits the Thanos and his opponent draws into like oil stuff, then this is bad news. Oh! He All got right. it. That's a start. He can dodge a flame cannon. Oh, that's bad for little Jux. But he's got four damage, which means... Oh, five damage, sorry. So he's getting closer. Yeah. Ever so closer. And, I mean, this mage deck it needs to pick up a lot of steam to either end the game or heal up and stay out of range. Well, he actually is going to be able to try and set up a couple of turns here for Lethal. Because he's got a, this rag is with nothing on the board. Not many cards in the Mijex's hand. He's not going to really be able to put creatures on the board to try and absorb these fireballs. Right. So they're going to be going to face. Well, he needs to hero power the 1-1 one, one for sure. Like yeah. 8 mana. 8 mana gives him room to play Dr. Boom. Or if you want to load up on the most damage possible, play Harrison Jones into the Temple Enforcer. He's going to be so safe and fireball the Antique Heal Bot. I don't really blame him. Because if that 8 damage goes into the um, Antique Heal Bot, yeah. it's less effective than if 6 oh, damage goes in. that is the game in wow. the series. Uh, two wet, unfortunately, is going to get stopped. And he has had so many chances to come to the Season 2 Finals, but he gets denied once again. And yeah. Jux advances to the round four. Yeah. Really well played by Lemmy Jux. You have to feel for two wit. But he did have a lot of chances. He played pretty well over the course of his runs through the Legendary Series. Uh, but in the end, of course, we will not be seeing him at that land finals. Lemmy Jux, on the other hand, is going to move on to the semifinals to face off against Oskaka, who had that uh, sort of walkover victory. That's right. Because lead paint um, won in the, in the day before. So you can see on your screen the bracket there. Our semifinals are set. Amaz taking on Tom 60229. That'll be the first semifinal. And following that will be Lemmy Jux versus Os Oskaka. So one of those four players will be joining us at the Season 2 Land Finals. And that's going to be coming up. We only have three more matches today, guys, before we find out who is the eighth player to be coming up. So it's going to mm -hmm. be a good time. Of course. So next matchup, first semifinal between Amaz and Tom 60229 will happen right after this break.